Hello YouTube, Jibo Unit here, and by the title of this video, you know exactly what I got. So let's get right to it. Rock Island Armory. And that only means one thing to many people. It means a 1911 government issue pistol. Well, there's tactical and whatnot, but I've got the government issue, which is the bare bones basic. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Okay, from my previous videos, particularly my AR videos, I discovered I needed more light. So let's try this with light. Okay. It's a pretty good plastic case. And here it is. This is the basic 1911 um, government issue 5 inch. Uh, with fixed sights, okay, the low profile fixed sights, um, the stone stock short trigger, the normal hammer, with, there's a little bit of detail there of the hammer, and uh, there is no beaver tail, just, you know, just your regular old uh, 1911. And here's the sight picture. Uh, try to do this. There you go, just like that. So, you know, it's pretty kind of hard. You know, it's not three dot, three three dot, three dot or luminescence or anything. But um, you know, this is it. Also, let's note something else on here. You can kind of see the the uh, slight uh, um, etching there, Rock Island Armory. I like that it's not gaudy and you know out there. Uh, it's very slight and conservative looking. I like that. I also like the the straight up and down serrations on the slide. And they are pretty rough, meaning that there's some substance to it. And it provides a good grip when you want to cycle the slide. And this slide is very smooth. I mean, for a pistol that costs this much or this little, to be made this solidly, I mean, this is a nice pistol. All the tooling is done with uh, equipment that make Colts in the Philippines. So this is a pretty good, you know, pretty well made gun. Okay, so here's the magazine. Let's see if you can hear this trigger. Very solid sounding and very solid feel and I do like this look at the bore of that 45 big old stopper okay um, it did come with only one mag it is an act mag okay and it is eight shot capacity eight round capacity okay pretty plain on the other side just says 45 ACP and this it's got a foot plate okay and let me show you that profile again. Okay, see? Sticks out a little bit. It doesn't bother me. It's not, not too bad. Not too bad right there. So, um, uh, also, since it only did come with one magazine, I did get three more. Okay. These happen to be Kimbers. The Kimber Kim Pro Tac Mag. Got these on sale at um, at Turner's as well. Okay, here's a Kimber, and uh, take, it's it's plain on on one side. Okay, and the other side it has the number of rounds marked here, and at the bottom, uh, 45 ACP Kim Pro Tac Mag. Okay, now the difference here. I'll show you that real quick. You can see that the the holes are bigger on the Kimber, on the Kimber, than it is on the tac, uh, Act Mag, and the holes are also straight up and down on the Act Mag, uh, and staggered on the Kimber. So just slight difference, and then plus you see that there is a foot on the Act 
Impact Mag and not one on the Kimber. However, there is an option. They do have these feet of different sizes that you can screw onto the bottom of the mag. So here are the differences right here. That's the different foot, foot thicknesses. So you can put them on the bottom, screw them on like so. It can be like this, okay? Or you can put high heels on this sucker and you get yourself a kiss mag. Just kidding. Okay, but some people like it like this. Here's why. Take a look at this. Now look at that profile. You do not see anything. It's a nice fit, nice smooth fit. Okay, and it doesn't stick out. Some people prefer it like that. See, nice, nice looking. So that's it. Okay, let me go ahead and move this case out of the way. All right. Now, the thing that uh, I, you know, that I don't like about this are the grips. Okay. Now some people really dig the grips. It's a nice grain. Look at that. It's a nice grain, but they're smooth. And the color contrasts with the Parkerized finish. I mean, I can't help it. It looks like a toy. I mean, to me it looks like a toy. Other people, you know, really dig this. There is a reason why um, Rock Island chose this type of grip to put on all their stock guns. I don't know why. I would never have chosen it myself. It's just too smooth and toy looking. So, first thing I did was buy a new grip. This is a Hogue monogrip. Okay? And it is rubber. And I like the rubber feel because it's comfortable. So, here's the detail it's got some of that texture on here okay the Hogue logo that it's hard to focus on um, and it's got the front finger um, uh, grips right here and the inside of the, you know if you're interested in the construction those crisscross lines in there are hard plastic it's it's part of the part of the grip that helps keep it from being all flimsy on the gun um, so these are nice grips here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm just going to go ahead and take these grips off and change them because I do not like them. So there's only two screws that hold each grip panel. Okay, and they come off fairly easy. So that means when you reinstall new grips, the screws should go on quite easily you don't need to have the strength of a gorilla to put these things back on. So, I uh, just want to show you that both of the screws are pretty much the same. They, well, not pretty much. They are the same size and the same length. So, there is no confusion with is the screw a top or the bottom screw. There is none because they're both the same. So, go ahead and take the grip off. This feels like it's on here. Be very careful when you take the grips off because you don't want to screw up the finish. Okay, so there you go. Grip number one. Okay, here's the first grip. Okay, um, also th this is where the grip rested on these little niblets right here. Whatever you call them. I don't know what they're called. But these are important when you set your new grips up because you want to make sure that the holes line up and that they slide on there pretty well so that you can put the screws back on. Do, do not want to have an ill-fitting grip. So, so I'll go ahead and take this off of here as well. Okay. Alright. So... Once again, same size screws, 
and let me get the other two here. All four are the same. So there is no mix up between top and bottom, right side, left side. So all the screws are the same. So you do not have to worry about mismatching any screws and screwing up anything. So get the grip off of here. All right. There you go. Two, two smooth wooden grips that I'm sorry, I do not like. So now to install this. Now instead of just putting it, you know, matching up the holes and putting it on one side and flipping it to the other side, it's it's a tight fit because this is rubber and they you know and Hogue makes a, a very makes a very firm grip. So you want to make sure that you put it on right and not like that, right? There we go. Finger grips in the front. But what you want to do is you want to go ahead and start by putting the front strap on, mating it, and pushing it on there. Make sure it's firmly on there, and then work work your way around. Uh, attaching the hole, the niblets to the holes of the grip. So I'm going to start with the with the literal bottom of the gun, and put those together first. So and it should should snap on. There we go. Okay. See how the bottom snapped on, and see how there is no space in between the frame and the grip. There shouldn't be if it's on there securely. Now if it looks like that you better check your hole alignment. See these are not I didn't attach these yet I just attached the bottom part. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the top. I'm going to get the bottom secured. I'm not going to bother with putting screws on. I want to make sure that all of the grip panels are on there. You may have heard those snapping noises. It's just the niblets snapping into the into the uh, grip holes. Okay, now see how there's no space between the frame. See, double checking the bottom. There's no space here and here. Flip it over so you can get a good look at that. Now I'll go ahead and secure the grips with the screws here. Now remember. You do not need to crank down on these things so hard with the strength of a gorilla. You just want to snug it on here and you can always check the tightness later, especially after you go shooting with it. And just double check, make sure that the screws didn't back out or anything. But you know, it doesn't require a whole lot of strength or torque to secure these and you do not want to strip these. Um, bolts here because if you do you're going to find yourself drilling a hole and getting an easy out screwing something up you know and having to go to Home Depot or something to get identical screws so do yourself a favor and don't be overzealous with the screws on on this pistol so just needs to be firm on there and then like I said you can check it later after you fire it or carry it around or whatever so so just add these on here like so and there you go now that looks a hundred percent better to me there we go and it I mean it feels good in the hand I like the rubberized feel and uh, let's put it in this holster how does that look? Pretty awesome. The holster, by the way, is Phobos. It's a nice, nice polymer holster. And this is secured by friction, so it requires a quick draw like that. So, there we go. Very nice. Alright.